Hi, my name is Cindy Rang. I'm Brianna Motzkis, and today is our special episode of Fabric Chat. <laughs> So we're out at my house again because we have a great big huge secret and it's been so funny because everybody keeps trying to guess what the secret is. Yes. And um, no one's, no, one's no one has even no. gotten close. <laughs> it's, uh, some people guess some bad things. It's like, well, weren't we smiling when we said we had a secret? It's a really good secret. It's a good one. But, um, and we're telling you two months earlier than we were going to. So stay to the end because we actually have to show you. To show you, yeah. So that's why we're out here. So anyway, so. Um, and then we also thought, because we are really excited to share this new uh information with you um but we think on friday we're going to air like a special little fabric chat um oh, right, right, just right. so you guys know um how we did on the bra auction um how we're doing with donations that donations you can still do donations now through the end of the weekend right right we're gonna go ahead and the donate now button is still up and running we still got i was telling brianna like twelve hundred dollars worth of donations last it's night awesome and so those of you that watched the bra auction or just heard about it um that was last saturday live mm -hmm. uh at four o'clock lasted two and a half hours super sorry we'll give you a little update on how we're going to fix that for next year we raised on the auction itself almost six thousand dollars and then in donations we've already received over that we've received an, an additional six thousand dollars in donations and so the idea was that the 21 women that were helping um that bra that was assigned to them they get that money plus um a, a 21th wait is that a number 21st or 20 <laughs> um their portion equal portion of the general fund money we keep zero administrative mm -hmm fees, zero amount of the money, and um, all of that will be divvied up. So we'll be able to give you numbers and send all of that out. So that's why we're going to do a, a special fabric chat because we think that that really deserves its own, yeah. you know, 20 minute chat about how much we raised, how we're making it different for next year, and um, mm -hmm. a little bit more about kind of the process. So we are just, and I just want to say the reason that we feel like it takes another, uh, just its own 20 minutes is because we are so blessed. Yeah. We are so honored by the friends that we have. The and generous, yeah. generous, kind, loving friends that we have. And um, we want you to know that we don't take that for granted. We know that when we ask, because we have a cause that we're helping, we know that you guys are there for us. And we, um, I, I just can't say enough how much we really appreciate that. And all of us talk about it all the time. And even Tracy, she's just, oh my gosh, we, the best you know, we, customers, the best customers, mm -hmm. the best family. And it, it really is true. So anyway, we, we're just so honored by that. So all right, so let's see. So um, we just have a couple quick things we're gonna share with you and then we're gonna get to the secret. But um, but first I have to share, or you can share, we, I, just really fast, I have to share the Wyatt story. Oh, <laughs> it, was, it was pretty cute. So we had a deal for our last week because um, we were went to Lowe's, we replaced the door at the house and everything and they really wanted to stop at the local bowling alley which also has this little kids arcade in there. And we haven't been there in a long time, but for some reason they always remember that's the place where you can bowl and play on games. So I said, well, it's too late now. They're probably closed. You know, let's make a deal that both of you, Harper at daycare, White at school, have a great week. No incidences, no, you know, calls home, nothing like that. And then we'll go. We'll take you in. Because he had, there was a couple of little, tiny, little tiny. five-year-old boy incidents, yeah. nothing, but you know, the teachers call on everything now, so, yeah. which I too appreciate. noisy in music, yeah, absolutely, I really You're do. A good mom. Yeah, I do appreciate it, because the only way for us to fix it is to fix it, if to they tell it. me a week later, he, he's not going to remember, right, he didn't remember that was bad, well, I don't know, you know, so I really do appreciate it, and I, we, they have a system that I can just text his teacher, she can text me, it's super slick, super easy, um, and they're super supportive. Like when he had the incident, we handled it and talked about what he's supposed to be doing at school and how he's supposed to be acting, all that. She was like, beyond, I'm so thankful that you're willing to work with us. It's like, are there parents who don't? Yeah. Like, well, it's, you have them for years, five to six don't hours. Don't bother me. I don't know. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So yeah. So, uh, he almost made it. 
I got a call from the Dean of Students, which I assume is a principal, but I don't, I don't know. know. Mrs. Knox, that he had an incident at 11.30 on Friday. He is so almost close. made it! So close. So close. So I went and picked him up, and then what I make him do is I make him tell Nana. Because he really doesn't like to upset Nana or Grandma or any of the Papas. It's mm -hmm. the hardest. He's okay telling Dad. He didn't really want to tell his sister. But that's the worst part is having to fess up and have someone disappointed in you. So that's our biggest thing is he really hates telling people what happened. If he, if he got in trouble. Yeah. He doesn't like to be in trouble. So he's telling me, you know, I said, he says, yeah, something bad happened at school. And I said, well, what happened? Well, I was throwing rocks, but he was explaining why he threw the rock. He wasn't like throwing the rocks at somebody, but he was apparently told to not throw the rocks. Because he was practicing and skipping rocks. He was practicing, and he was showing <laughs> Ian, who's the kid he's always in trouble Zayden. with. Zayden. Zayden. Him and Zayden <laughs> were skipping rocks. They weren't throwing them at, but the teacher told him, but he still had that one rock in his hand, and he had to throw it in, because what were you going to do? Throw it down? And yeah. he was explaining the whole thing, and it all made sense. And I said, well, gosh, well, then what happened? And he said, well, then he had to go in, and he had to eat lunch with the prisoners. <laughs> with the prisoners. Said, the prisoners. <laughs> and then mom says, Brianna says, you mean the principal? Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. It was so good. <laughs> oh, and then, you know, you have to try not to laugh because he's very serious. He got and in he trouble and had to eat with the prisoners. <laughs> the other prisoners. <laughs> and he's like, mom, he made, they made me eat school lunch. <laughs> Which I don't. It makes well, that's difference. what you eat is prison food when you're in prison. <laughs> like you're like you need to get just, you know, milk and bread. But I wanted to make him a little loaf of something with a file in it. <laughs> so that was the best oh, part. It was the yeah. best part. He I'm just, just always going to remember that story. <laughs> Kindergarten had to eat with the prisoners. <laughs> Yeah, Have you good. told the principal that story yet? Uh, I got emailed it to her. I said, hey, so, you know, I, principal's a big the word. The best part. Because <laughs> we talked about everything is fine, but we oh. had to tell everybody why it's, you know, messed up. And Yeah. Yeah. You, it was pretty good. You're the warden. The warden. <laughs> yes. The, Change your title. The warden. <laughs> yeah. It was pretty good. So, yeah. yeah. We've laughed about that all week. Yeah. All week. Yeah. Really, really So fun. that was a so, fun word. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, um, one other thing that I want, so we just, we needed to share that with you guys. It was yeah. really good. Um, um, the other thing that I wanted to tell you is the nut mystery. Oh yes. Has been solved. I feel like you probably could have figured it out, but it was just so weird because there wasn't a card in there or a from or, or a from yeah. or anything. And then I went into my email and I, um, I searched for nuts.com, nothing. Cause I thought, well, would they just have sent it to us? Because if they've done that, cause that other company did, but they gave us a code for you guys to use because we were kind of advertising and yeah. you know, then you guys could get something out of, you know, for nothing. And so I thought, well, that seemed a little bit weird. So anyway, um, we did hear from the gifter and she said she was, there was supposed to be a card in oh. there who said what it was from. <laughs> Can you guess? You, you probably, there's so many. And there's so many. It was Jan Kalanick. Oh! <laughs> she so, always knows the best places. She is so nice. She says yeah. her husband loves them. Oh. And um, and then she said there was something, it was a Turbinado, um dark chocolate, Turbinado salt covered almonds or whatever. She said that's his favorite. And it's like, oh, oh yeah, I ate all of those. Those were really good. <laughs> so, um, and we did share them. So she said they were for everybody so that we yeah. could um, have some sustenance some during good snacks. the during the auction. Oh, good. So, yeah, that's so, what we were eating them. Yeah, yeah. We were, yeah, yeah. We opened them. You guys saw us open on Sunday, but we actually filmed that just before. Yeah. Um, so a uh, little, you know, secret there, but not the secret, but a secret. A secret, yes. Um, but anyway, and speaking of Jan, it's kind of funny, just a really fast little thing I have to tell you. I was channeling my Jan last night. I made um, um, plov. So if you guys don't know what Plav okay. is, so um, we have a little Ukrainian deli that's just kitty corner from us here in Soap Lake, and they serve Plav, pierogies, borscht, dumplings, mm -hmm. and a sandwich. Only those five things. All super fabulous. And Plav is this super tender meat and rice. 
And um, the way they cook the rice is really different. It's very unusual. And so anyway, Tracy said that she had made plov and she felt that she'd figured it out. And so she mm -hmm. wrote down what she put in. And I thought, well, I think I can do that. But I told Tracy in 30, how long have I been married? 36 years now? 37? Mm -hmm. I don't know. A long time. Really long time. <laughs> um, uh, I've never boiled rice. I mean, my father-in-law oh, was um, mm -hmm. Japanese, and so for 40 years, however long it's been, we have cooked with a rice cooker that's now a great big thing, but back then, you, you couldn't get them here. But anyway, mm -hmm. that's all we've ever used. We have rice probably twice a week, always with the rice cooker. I've never boiled rice before, so that part kind of had me a little confused. She goes, no, 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 it'll work out just fine. So anyway, so I made this broth. It's all beef broth, and you cook this meat for forever and ever and ever. Um, and so the beef broth was great, but the problem is that, because we put in red pepper, ground pepper, sure. pepper flakes, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, ground uh, jalapeno pepper, but anyway, a whole bunch of that. And But what happens is it's cooking down, mm -hmm. and so it's getting far more concentrated. Oh. And then when I put the rice in, I really did not do the rice properly. I don't know what I didn't do right, but I just don't know how to make rice that way. So anyway, when we ate it two nights ago, it wasn't fantastic. And you know, dad now, is super Now could you nice. make it in your rice cooker? I mean, you can make... I don't know. I feel Mexican like... Mexican rice in your rice cooker. So why couldn't you... I feel like I just need a lesson on how to boil the rice. It's on the back of your rice bag. Well, it said that it's two cups of water to one cup of rice and you boil it and then you cook it for 12 minutes. That's what it said on the back. I felt that, like true. I did that. Because you put your lid on. Do you put your lid on for the 12 minutes? I feel like I had the lid on. Yeah. Because that's the hard part. And for 12 minutes, you leave the lid on. And you don't touch it. Right. You just, okay, I was stirring it. Yeah. And I, for me, I only, because I do the whole boil thing, stir and I leave it. Oh. Which always freaks me out, because how do you clean cooked rice off the bottom of your pan? Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. if it burns. I mean, I don't know. But I, I'm the same as you. Even last night, we used the rice cooker because... Oh, he's right. Yeah, because we bought the rice cooker for the kids for their wedding presents. Yeah. I mean, that's what we It has a little time. steamer top so I can cook vegetables or rice right. or fish or whatever at the same time. Right. And, yeah, it's... Yeah. Right. I love my rice cooker. Well, anyway, I messed it up. <laughs> and so, and Dad, and he says, he always says the same thing. What's for dinner? And then he says, well, how is it? And I'll say, oh... Mm. And I said, well, we'll see what you think. And of course, I didn't use he's sugar. super nice about it. <laughs> Doesn't say anything bad. But then what happens is he did not have seconds. And here's the real... Oh, he didn't take it for lunch. He did not take it for lunch. Oh, no. And I felt kind so of what, bad. So what did he end up taking for lunch? I don't know. It's some... <laughs> rando stuff because <laughs> he doesn't eat he, he loves the fact that he, he's got the shit he ever. opens up you know pork chops <laughs> yeah. or mashed potatoes and gravy and yeah. you know fresh corn and these other you know young bucks or heating up their eating. hot bucket <laughs> <laughs> corn yeah. Dog. yeah he's not being judgy he's just you know eating it like this, this is, is what, what you get after 40 years of marriage <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By golly, you know, stick so it in there, anyway, yeah. So, you know, he talks about it all the time. Oh, those guys in the vending machine, yeah. you know, he <laughs> rolls his eyes for these young guys. So, yeah, so I don't know. I he might have made himself a sandwich, but I felt really bad that he didn't have, um, you know, some OG food for lunch. So, this is where Jan comes in. Oh, okay. So, what I did, I had this great big pot of plop, yeah, which so, not all the way cooked rice, no. Mm. Yeah, I don't know what was wrong with that. So I sprayed a casserole dish, put that in a casserole dish, oh. put an entire brick of cream cheese. Yum. Put, um, I did some steamed broccoli that mm -hmm. I tucked in there, poured in about, oh, maybe roughly three quarters to a quarter of a cup of heavy cream. Topped the whole thing with about a cup and a half, two cups of shredded cheese. <laughs> It in the you oven. Gotta go. It was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> he says, well, "This is really good." And I thought, "Cream yeah, and cheese can make I'm, it all." I know. Better. Cream and cheese. <laughs> yeah. And he didn't say anything. He didn't say, "I kind of recognize." No, he didn't recognize anything. So mm. anyway, it's like, yeah, I redeemed, and he took it for lunch too. Oh, good. So. <laughs> Thank God. You can't have two days of weird food for lunch. Yeah. Would ruin his thing. So anyway. 
All right. So anyway, Jan, thinking of you and thank you so much for the <laughs> nuts and, uh, and the Southern cooking tips. And, you know, that's the other thing too, that we kind of wanted to just briefly talk about is that, um, for the auction, um, Saturday night, I think mm -hmm. a lot of people thought that we were, that it was locals when we kept saying, Oh, Lori's buying it for Amy and Amy's buying it. And where's Allie? And you know, none of those were local people. Yeah. Most of those people were, um, um, let's see, we had Georgia, Pennsylvania, Colorado, California, the people that we were talking about, Canada, mm -hmm. were nobody local. What happens is people come to retreats. So they come here to the retreat center and it's 20 strangers that leave best friends. Can't yep. wait to see each other again the next year. Um, and we'll even, oh, let's do two retreats together next year. Um, some have gone on vacations together mm -hmm. um, uh, and done other things, you know, travel across the country to stay at each other's homes, bring their husbands, you know. So it really is nice because we're here together for five days. We check in on a Wednesday, check out on a Sunday. And we're here pretty intense. I yeah. mean, you're, you're together the whole time. And so that's why we never worry. I mean, you certainly have an opportunity to have um, a single occupancy room if that's what you want. But usually we say, let us, let us hook you up with somebody. So mm -hmm. you might be the only person flying in from Parker, Colorado, and you get to meet somebody cool who's sharing a room with you. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have your own twin beds, but you're in a bedroom together and you're sharing a bathroom together and you leave best friends, friends. Mm -hmm. best, best friends. So that's what happens. And it's funny because then when we talk about retreats, people will say, well, you talk about those retreats all the time, but how do we sign up? Mm -hmm. Well, the problem is that they're full because we, um, we advertise or put our, it's explain a, all of the retreats on January 15th. It's a special newsletter that goes out. Special newsletter. These are the ones this is what we're going to be teaching. Here's some pictures. Here's some ideas. And they're for sale now. Mm -hmm. It starts at 8.30 in the morning um, on that day. Uh, that's when uh, the email goes out and it, the online is turned on. And we sell out very, very quickly. Very quickly. And then what will happen is for one penny, and we have to charge for it because otherwise it doesn't come up in our system. Um, for one penny, um, you sign up and you get on the waiting list and then we know the time. Who was first on the waiting list, second, you know, and what happens. And oftentimes I would say probably um, five per retreat. Um, mm -hmm. Life happens and they have to cancel. They get a mm -hmm. refund and, um, and our policy is 60 days before we give you a full refund, no questions asked. Um, less than that, if we can fill your spot, we give you a full refund. And we've never, I mean, even sometimes three days before we've been able to fill your spot. Mm -hmm. So it's not a problem. And so waiting list people always get in or not always, but it's a good thing to be on the list. Yeah. Yeah. We you can get know. you in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you've paid your penny to be on the waiting list and then I call you and say, Hey, there's a spot you can say, yeah, mm -mm. You not have noticed or something else happened yeah. or whatever. So it doesn't matter. But, but anyway, so people kept saying, gosh, why do you talk about those retreats all the time when we can't really get in? Well, a couple of things. Um, one thing about that is that, um, it, that's not the only way. Um, and I think that's the other thing that gets to be kind of confusing sometimes mm -hmm. is that, um, we're going to show you a little bit, but we have three bungalows out here where if you just want to plan a trip and come see us, um, in fact, this morning we have two gals from Montana that are leaving, they're checking out and they drove over and, um, stayed for two nights and they shopped at the shop and we visited and went out to dinner and mm -hmm. just had a great time. And then, um, and they stayed in one of the bungalows and then, um, and then they go home. Um, and so we have the bungalows almost always available for visitors that want to come. And then we have um, four condos that are four twin beds each. And that's what goes with the event center. So that if you have a group of quilters, um, uh, friends, a guild, and you want to come over and book a retreat, that's what you do because we only do six per year. The rest of the time, all of the rest of those weeks, it's other groups who want to come 
So our entire event center, so the big event center plus all four condos, 16 beds, is $995 a night for the whole place. So each person roughly, if you have 16, they're paying $62 per person per night. Um, and then you figure out how you're going to cook, if, you, if anybody is going to, mm -hmm. one person does all the cooking, or each of you pick a different meal that you're cooking for everybody. Whatever you want to do is fine. Um, I usually come out and I do kind of a little welcome and explain all about Soap Lake to everybody. Um, but then other than that, I don't bother you unless, you know, you want me to come out and bother you. <laughs> Otherwise, I leave you alone. You kind of do your own thing. And so that's what happens, um, typically. Mm -hmm. um, the big problem is that we are booked every yeah. single weekend. Even the holiday weekends. Yeah. Which Even is the holiday. Crazy to me, but cool. It's because there isn't anything left. You know, we have openings like in December around Christmas, but of course nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants to, you know, um, worry about our snow. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, but other than that, and so that's why we only book out a year in advance because if you came this weekend and you stayed, um, and you want to book the same time next year, you get the same time next year. Nobody can swoop in and say, Hey, I want, you know, the third weekend in mm -hmm. September. That's yours if that's if you want it. If you don't want it, then we'll give it to the next person in line. Um, so anyway, that's always kind of been the problem is that we've got um, no room at the inn. <laughs> Clever. Now. Clever. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah, ah. <laughs> see what I did there. <laughs> yeah, it's on it. <laughs> so um, now it's time to show you the secret. Yeah. Okay, so just for a little bit of reference, um, so we're in our backyard. So this is my house right here. So you can see I'm super, super close. And then this over here is the one that we call the um, garden bungalow because it's right um, near the garden, which, okay, it's fall, so things don't look fantastic at the moment. This is the event center over here. And as we look across, you can see you can see our little patio where we can all sit outside and have wine and dinner, and there's the lake. So we have three different bungalows that were originally built in 1906. We have this one, which is uh, the garden bungalow. We have a hideaway bungalow, and we have a patio bungalow. All of them have been remodeled, and they all have queen-size beds, a kitchenette, bathroom, little sitting area that's perfect for a married couple or a couple people that just want to come and hang out. We'll show you the inside of this one. So again, super small. So there's a little sitting area, um, a bed, there is a little um, kitchenette, and there is a private bathroom, just a three-piece bathroom. Comfortable enough for hanging out for a couple days. Now, when you come and just hang out for a couple days, uh, that's kind of all you're doing. You really don't have an opportunity to be in here because in the event center is where some other group is going to be. Um, in fact, we have a group checking in later today, and um, this will easily hold, I don't know, we've had up to 36 people in here sewing before. Uh, and then, of course, they stay in the 16 condos that are just out the back door. We've done a bunch of different tours of many of the condos. Um, they're all basically the same. They're all just decorated a little bit different. Back here, there are three bathrooms back, back there and we have a big, huge commercial kitchen at the other end and this is our little coffee bar. And again, what we're looking at through the front doors right here is that great big patio and the lake. Now, finally, it's time to show you the secret. Okay, this is the secret. So, and this is, we're gonna tell you the secret and then we're gonna tell you why we have to tell you and why we weren't gonna tell you. So the secret is we are adding a second retreat center. And um, this one is smaller. It's smaller and I'm gonna actually show you all the way through it. It is five bedrooms, so it'll sleep 10 people and it has a great big huge sewing area so that as we have smaller groups, who really don't need 16 beds, they'll be able to stay there. Also, that opens up 52 weeks um, worth of more booking opportunities, which we think is super, super nice. The main reason that we didn't tell anybody ahead of time, and we've known this since 
well, since December of last year. And we started construction in, when did we start at Brianna? Three uh, months ago, a while ago. Um, excavation foundation we've been doing a bunch of stuff so um, the reason we didn't tell people was because um, as people are coming and staying here we want to give them an opportunity to choose if they want to come back here next year for their same weekend or they want to be over there for their next weekend so we kind of wanted to make sure that our people who already had booked um, were able to choose what they wanted so we would know for 2023 what spots were available Um, Pretty much everybody has come through. We do have a couple um, that we're still kind of working on. But the reason that we have to say everything now is because, let me just show you this great big behemoth building back there. That is what we call the shop. Pa tells everyone it's the shop, which it is. It's his shop. Now, this is a country guy who has always had the 6,000 square foot shop at home that he's done everything with. And... um, He has not liked his teeny tiny little garage that he has out here. So when we acquired this piece of property for this, he thought this was a perfect spot to build a shop. So everyone in Soap Lake, Ephrata, Wenatchee, Moses Lake, everyone believes this is the shop, meaning the fabric patch, that we are moving out here. We are not moving out here. We are not moving the shop. This is Brian's shop. It's just what we call the shop. The fabric patch is staying in Efreda where it's been for 23 years and hopefully we'll be there for the next 23 years. So uh, this is Brian's shop. So every time we try to tell people, we can't like put it on Facebook. We can't do anything because we can't, you know, necessarily show the construction project. So we thought, okay, it's time to reveal the secret. We'll still have a great big huge open house next February and you can see the whole thing done, but um, it's time to say this is a second retreat center which will be booked separately. So you can either stay here and have 16 twin beds and a great big huge place and a great big huge patio, or you can stay here, 10 twin beds, great big huge patio, beautiful view of the lake, all of the amenities, either one, two that will be available. And that is pause. Okay, it might not quite look like much, but I feel like you can kind of see. So this is the sewing area, which again, imagine for um, 10 people will be sewing in here. So we have plenty of room for two tables each. We have a great big sliding glass door here, two big chairs. We'll have um, a big comfy couch here, great big door here. Of course, there's the lake. And then this is a covered patio, covered deck. Um, And then more big windows, more comfy seating, coffee bar over here. This is the front door, which I don't know if you can tell if the sun's in your eyes or not, but you will have these really cool neighbors that'll be right next to you doing their own retreating thing and you can invite each other over for wine on the deck and then i don't know are you able to bring the camera this way or is the sun bugging you so then up here then you'll see so there's a um a bedroom here with two twin beds a bedroom here with two twin beds super long hallway a bedroom here with two twin beds Great big humongous bathroom. I am not entirely sure how this bathroom got so big, but it's a great big um, four foot walk-in shower um, that'll be in here. And then we'll adjust, do we have to adjust the light? So then if we come down the hall, and this is a great big dining room, so we'll have a big long table um, uh, that will seat 12. And then um, more seating, that'll be here. Big, huge kitchen. This one will have a big double door fridge that will have far more space in the fridge. Um, Countertops down this back room, back here. This was the old house that we um, are remodeling. The down here is washer, dryer, um, sink, and then cupboard with um, beach stuff. Uh, will be in there. There is a basement, but no access to the basement. It's just going to be storage down there. We don't want to deal with um, basements. And then back here, um, there's another bedroom in the back corner with a great big walk-in closet. 
and then a bedroom back here. Small little bathroom here, just a toilet and a sink, and another big bathroom straight back. That's it. So two and a half bathrooms, five bedrooms, big huge dining room, big huge sewing area, laundry room, asphalted parking, covered patio, view of the lake, and um, excellent neighbors. And the price of this, we should just mention, the price is $6.95 a night, um, two night minimum. And I know that if you were to rent um, a place like this on an Airbnb for a family, you're gonna pay more like $2,000 a night. Uh, but that's not who our clients are. Um, this is only rented to quilters, scrapbookers, knitters. Uh, that's it. Uh, oh, and Margo, we rent to Margo. Um, uh, nobody else, so it's not open for family reunions, weddings, things like that. So um, we can keep our prices down because of our clientele, because um, um, our people are super tidy and, um, and they treat our stuff really nice. So uh, anyway, so we, uh, we actually have some dates available for next year for both facilities. That would be for, um, we're calling this the Daisy House. We are calling it Daisy House because we are right on Highway 17. And um, in Soap Lake, we call Highway 17 Daisy Street. And so we're calling, this one is now Daisy House. The other one is Gate 17. So Gate 17, Sleep 16, Daisy House, Sleeps 10. All right, that was our secret. So uh, we hope that you guys are as excited about it as we are. And now we can start saying it is Pause Shop. It is not the fabric patch. We are not moving it. So just for reference, this is the back door of the event center. So the lake is on the opposite side. And then as you come around, um, that door goes into my backyard. Those doors over there are the patio bungalow. Um, this is Pa's current shop, which he is not happy with because uh, it's just a little garage. And then, of course, the condos. It's a quad, so all four condos are um, connected. They're right there. We have a little bit of a construction zone that you can see. And then this is the last of the bungalows. We, um, we have the three that were redone. This is our fourth one that Pa's slowly been working on. And I don't know, we don't have any time frame as to when that one will be done. And then now again, you can see the massive Pa's shop. Thank you for watching our video. We invite you to leave a comment, hit the like button, or better yet, subscribe to our channel so you never miss an episode. You can also visit our Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or Pinterest pages, or find all of those things and our online store at fabricpatch.net. Gotcha. Okay, so one last little thing. I have to show you my cat. Forest is out here all the time, and whenever there's a retreat here, oh, then this is the back door. This is that laundry area. You can see this a little bit better. But we had to come back to get Forest. So that's Forest. He's our little um, Manx, and um, we call the retreaters Forest's ladies because he has to go out and see the ladies, and he's oh, um, super social and super snoopy. And he wants to know what this place is. He's been rolling in the dirt. He's not that color at all. <laughs> and he's not pregnant. And he's not pregnant. Everybody <laughs> says, oh, is your cat pregnant? No, it's a guy. And he's fat. So anyway, he's looking for his ladies. He knows they should be here any minute. <laughs> <laughs> and if anybody in your group is allergic to cats and you insist he not come in, oh, it's on. <laughs> then he really wants in. <laughs>